I'm sitting here thinking to myself, of all the bed bucking videos that I have done for the last year or so since I've been starting this series of videos, how come is it I have not done one yet on Larry Elder? Considering there could have been endless content that I could have done just on him alone. But you know, I always say that there's one thing or some things that someone can say that'll stick out to me that makes me put them into this category. Same thing with the Karen videos. And I think I found that one. And shout out to Lisa because she helped guide me in that direction. So Larry Elder is like much of these bootlicking shoe shining tap dancing buffoons out here who was against the reparations that could possibly take place for those who live in San Francisco. Cause as you know, in San Francisco, they are trying or aiming to give $5 million to those who are considered foundational black Americans. If they can prove without the shadow of a doubt with lineage and documents that they are who they claim to be. And he is upset about it, but I found that it's very interesting considering a comment that he made two years ago, but we're going to get into that after I go through this article. Conservative TV and radio host Larry Elder on Thursday took aim at a new proposal by San Francisco's Reparation Committee to pay each black longtime resident $5 million, while warning that the movement in support of reparations is growing as young people are being quote-unquote indoctrinated into its supporting narrative. That's a very interesting word. He said that young people are being indoctrinating, indoctrinated into supporting reparations. That's what he said. The crazy part about it is, isn't Larry Elder FBA as well, or is there proof out there that he is not? Because as of right now, I think he is. He would benefit from it as well. This is a question I've been asking myself for the longest, especially when the reparations conversation really started to take steam. Why is it that people who would benefit from this so against it? Not everybody, of course, but people like Larry Elder. But see, is he, but see his whole shtick and who he aligns himself with, he's always going to be on their side. And, that's, and I basically chalked it up to he is so in bed with these people that anything they say or do is completely and utterly fine. They could kick him in the rear right now, and all he would do is laugh it off and probably say, you didn't kick me hard enough. Kick me again. That's probably, that's I think that's where he's at with it. It goes on to say, I think the movement is growing. Elder told Fox News Digital in an interview. I mean, look at who he's speaking with. Young, woke people. There it is. They use that word woke young woke people are being indoctrinated into believing that systemic racism, structural racism, historical racism is why black people are underachieving. Well, actually, Larry, that's actually not a bad assessment. I mean, as far as what you just said, but outside of the part of into believing, that's what it is. See him, him and. Ron the Snowflake or Ron the Satan down there in Florida will be BFFs. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they are at least friends on some capacity. Elder, who previously ran for governor of California and lost. They won't insert that, but I'll do it. Was reaching after the San Francisco African-American Reparations Advisory Committee, which advises the city on developing a plan for reparations for black residents, released its draft report last month to address reparations for what it considers 300 years of repression and discrimination for which black Americans deserve compensation there. They left off a few years because it was definitely more than 300. It cites government policies, Jim Crow laws and redlining for causing the wealth gap between white and black communities. While neither San Francisco nor California formally adopted the institution of chattel slavery, the tenets of segregation, white supremacy and systemic repression and exclusion of black people were codified through legal and extra legal actions, social codes and judicial enforcement, the draft states. The draft plan includes a long list of financial recommendations for black San Francisco residents, including a one-time lump sum payment of $5 million to each eligible individual. While there has been significant outrage over the proposal, Elder was not surprised by the plan originating in San Francisco. 
My first reaction is, what would you expect from that city he quit? You know what's so funny? He doesn't have all this outrage for that same city where the mayor out there approved a $1,200 a month, I guess you could say stipend, for those who are in Hall T for the next 18 months. If I'm not mistaken, didn't they kick that off last month based on the article that I read last year? I believe they kicked it off last month if it's still going on. But I didn't hear Larry Elder say a thing. It's funny that all these other people around them are just getting money like it's nothing. But when it comes to us, there has to be some kind of a stipulation. If they're not doing a study, you got opposers such as him. Thank God he's in the minority. Elder defined reparations as the extraction of money from people who were never slave owners to be given to people who were never slaves. Keep that line in mind when I pull up this other piece of a document from what he said two years ago. Just keep that in mind. He also highlighted the connection between Democrats and both slavery and oppressive systems like Jim Crow. That's another little talking point that people like Larry Elder and those who like uh, who think like him, they always want to bring up, you know, the political leanings of black people. You know how black people have been really leaning towards Democrat for the longest time. Well, here's the thing, Democrat or Republican. It doesn't matter from which angle did it come from. We both were both parties affected us in a negative way historically. So it doesn't matter if you say, oh, it's the Democrats fault. Oh, it's the Republicans fault. It's both of their faults. And when you even take that out of the equation, that still has nothing to do with our reparations, because when we were enslaved, we were not part of any political party. We weren't allowed to be a part of or participate in any of that, let alone vote. So they can stop and cease and desist and dead that talking point. They were also the party of Jim Crow. All of the Southern governors and senators were the ones supporting Jim Crow. A greater percentage of Republicans voted for the Civil Rights Act in the House and the Senate than the Democrats. See, and that's that talking point of, oh, the Republicans came to save them. Well, historically, well, at one point, in, in case y'all didn't know, black people did lean more to the Republican side. But guess what ended up happening? Those PC individuals back then didn't want to be, quote unquote, ran by black people so they ran black people out of the republican party and went to the democrats if that had not happened who knows what the trajectory of what the republican party would have looked like today but they don't want to talk about that part they don't want to talk about how a lot of white people back then didn't want black people to quote unquote control them so they ran them out of the republican party because black people, especially with more so black men, were starting to hold political positions in the Republican Party, but they did not want to be overran by people who they considered ex property. How dare this person, they said something else, how dare this N word think they're better than me when their ancestry comes from, from slavery? My ancestors owned them. How is it that the tables are now turned and now they are so called over me? So they, what did they do? They ran them up out of the Republican Party and ended up by default ending up. They ended up with the Democrats. Y'all can go and look this up like this is heavily documented. But they don't want to talk about that. Larry ain't going to talk about it. I'll talk about it. And you, if you're not, if you're not sure, you can go and do the research. It goes on to say. Democrats founded the KKK. I don't say the Democratic Party, but Democrats founded the KKK. So Democrats are the ones who ought to be apologizing for slavery, for Jim Crow, not anybody else. It does not matter what the political leanings is, because let's not sit here and pretend that those who are Republican did not own slaves as well. See, people like Larry Elder only tell a small and I'm, I'm talking about a salt grain size part of it and then doesn't even tell the facts about that either. How do you take something so small and then even lie about that? I'm like the research is out there. All you got to do is look for it. Elder argued that the money would do nothing to solve the underlying issues facing black Americans, such as the breakdown of the family and would only serve to exacerbate racial disharmony. 
So the money won't do anything other than anger people who are on the hook for paying them with nothing to do with the conditions I just mentioned and will create a great deal of racial strife and tension in America and will create a desire for other people who feel they've been warned for money as well. And that's another thing. They keep creating this fantasy in their head that something major is going to pop off. The money's going to come for the government. That's who it comes from. They don't say nothing when all that, all these billions of dollars is going over to Ukraine. Your tax paying dollars is wrapped up in that as well. It's mixed in there somewhere. Or whenever money gets dished out to other places, they don't complain about that. But when it comes to what we are owed, now it's an issue. Now it's a problem. It's going to create all this tension and all of this like there wasn't tension already. Are you scared, Larry? I swear. You know what it is? Like I said, a lot of this is being of this of being dishonest and disingenuine. But a lot of it is fear. These bootlicks are scared of what could happen if we get what's owed to us because they're scared their position being the bootlick, being the shoe shiner, being the tap dancer, the shuck and jiver is going to be affected in a major way. They're not going to be needed anymore. They are so much in lust, not love, in lust with their oppressor that they don't even want to see themselves if they're in a position to be to be better. They love or are, are in lust with their subservient roles and they do not want us to be better than them because see the thing is they've been put in a position by so uh, by the so-called dominant to be better. So if we get out from under now they're going to be affected and we'll be in the position to remove them. Because, see, they're still amongst the society, not with us, but they're still here. We get into the position where we're supposed to be in. We can get them, like, clear them off the table. Almost like knocking all the pieces off of the chessboard and starting over without them. That's what it is. It's really all fear. They are scared of what could actually happen. You know what? I hope they hang their hat on that fear for as long as they possibly can. He noted that women could have a case for reparations due to their exclusion from the right to vote until the 20th century. Notice when he says women, he's not being specific which women. That could be any woman, not just black women. And what does that have to do? See, he keeps bringing politics into it. That's another reason why I can't stand people like Larry Elder or Candace Owens or Fakem and all of them because they all say the same thing. They all sound like AI programmed robots. The only thing is they don't sound like Ben Shapiro when they talk. Thank God. It's bad enough. We got him talking. And it doesn't matter what he's talking about. Just talking. It goes on to say you could argue that women were shafted out of a lot of social benefits and financial benefits by not having the right to vote until the early 20th century. So virtually every group can make a case why that group is entitled to something. When do we stop? How do we stop? Where do we stop? No. How about you stop, Larry Elder? You are a failed black man. You are a failed black person. You are a failed being. How is it that you won the race to the egg? I don't know. But like I said, Larry Elder has been like this this way for years. I believe Harvey talks about this a lot whenever he brings up Larry Elder. He's been like this for years. This is not something that he just woke up one day and had a a, a aha moment and just said, I'm going to turn over a new leaf. And this is what I'm going to start doing. This is how he is. This is who he's always been. He noted reparations were once a fringe idea that has caught on dramatically in recent years, along with other ideas to rectify past wrongdoings. Whoever said compound interest is the greatest force in the universe never encountered white guilt, he quipped. That word, that phrase, white guilt, reminds me of how my comment section looks under that MD video. Because I kept seeing that pop up a lot. As for how people can be helped to succeed in life, Elder's advice was quite simple. Oh, God, I'm I'm almost scared to see what he got to say. For the most part, if you work hard, here we go. 
invest in yourself, avoid the criminal justice system, don't have a kid before you're 20, get married first, you will not be poor. That is some horrible advice. And the thing is, that's a dig at black people because he's, so you're saying that every black person is in the criminal system, is in the criminal, is in the system, that every black person has a kid before 20, that every black person is not married, and that if you do all of those things, you won't be poor. I know people who done the complete opposite of that and are will are very well off. I've known, I see people that are more successful, you know, doing everything completely what he's uh, opposite of what he's saying and probably not be that well off. But that was a dig at black people as if any other group of people couldn't fall into that category or has not or has fallen into that category. But it was just towards us. But that part where they keep saying, if you just work hard, if you just work hard, they only tell that the black people. Meanwhile, you got all these other groups out here that are skating right on by. But these buffoons like Larry Elder turn their blinders on to everything else and then put all the stereotypes in a basket labeled black. And there you have it. And they say all of these things to try to say, oh, that's why we shouldn't get them. That's besides the point. It's a debt owed. So you can say everything that you want in the world, but it's a debt that's still owed that has to be paid. That And that's really all there is to it. No matter how you feel about it, no matter what the political leanings, no matter anything that he said so far in this article, it's still a debt that is owed to us. He said, and that's what we ought to be telling people instead of you're owed something, even though you're not the one who picked cotton. You're not the one who suffered because of Jim Crow. You certainly were not the ones who were slaves. Well, tell that to the people and survivors of the Holocaust. Because if you look through even recent documents, they've been getting paid hand over fist for quite some time. Or any other group. Again, when it comes to us, there's always an issue. Always. There's always a problem. The mentality is you are entitled to something, you are owed something, and that's probably the most damaging thing of all. And that's the end of that article. You know what? I'm not even going to add any more to that. I already know y'all are cutting up in the comments, but I wanted to bring something up to you that literally contradicts everything this man just said now mind you this is january 2023 when i just read i want y'all to see what he said back in i believe september 2021 look at this this is on the revolt website september 7th 2021 black conservatives says slave owners deserve reparations for losing their quote-unquote property twitter reacts larry elder argued that former slave owners are also owed reparations this is a person that doesn't know history because that's exactly what they got that's exactly what they got when slavery was officially abolished like officially abolished the government gave money, probably millions of dollars to slave owners for quote unquote loss of property. That's also heavily documented. I'm not even going to go through and read what else he said, because I know it's a bunch of bullshit, but we know that they received money and payments in order to recoup their loss of property. If he would have did the proper research, he would have saw that. And I'm almost certain that in the tweets responding to that, the people are telling him that. And as a matter of fact, if Larry Elder would have just typed in certain keywords in the Google, he would have saw this April 16th, 1862 Compensated Emancipation Act. Let's scroll down a little bit, shall we? On April 16th, 1862, the, D- the District of Columbia Compensated Emancipation Act became law. We're going to skip this part, but just focus on this. The federal government compensated the quote unquote owners of enslaved people for their loss of property. The people who were freed were not compensated, meaning our ancestors, nor given any assistance for the transition to their freedom. 
There it is right there, Larry. If you would have bothered to just take a little bit of time and type some words into Google, this would pop right on up on the first page. And it did. See, the thing is, I didn't have to type this into notes because I already knew, but for the sake and purpose of this video and contextual purposes, why not? That's how you know people like Larry Elder are stupid. But then again, they put morons in these positions and let them become the mouthpieces for everybody or what they seem to be everybody. People who should not be speaking. But I just find it very interesting that he went out on a limb and said that people who own slaves should have been compensated. But then again, look at who he's touting and holding the water for. PC people yet again. I swear this man probably doesn't have not one mirror in his home. He probably is disgusted with what he looks at when he sees himself in the mirror. Don't worry, Larry. When we see you, we're disgusted as well. And it has nothing to do with your face looking like it was made out of clay like they started the process, but they didn't finish it. So they just left you out there looking like a Picasso painting. Even the artist got tired of looking at you. It is that bad. But it's the fact of your mindset. It's a, the fact of who you are as a person. When your moment comes, and it will because everyone gets it, it's going to be a kiss to the high heavens. And I and several others cannot wait for that moment to come.